Say something. Say something. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. First, first, let me let me. You got to have some theme music. You got to because I wait. I fought so hard for this. It's the eye of the tiger. Right? You better oh, stop. You better not. <laughs> you better not. Young lady, it took prayer and everything. I, I didn't go into fasting to get you on here, but you know, it's going to be okay. And so, how are, oh my huh? how are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. So, for those who don't know, this is my sister, my friend. Yadira Trevino. <laughs> so tonight we're covering a, a ooh, tonight we're covering a little bit of I want to talk about work because Amen. so many people depend upon you for ministry mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't consider that Yadira has a job to do. So what has it been like taking on new responsibilities at your company? Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so, you know, I've been in my company for 25 years and I have been doing basically the same thing in different levels um, when it comes to billing. So for like 25 years, I've been doing that. So I got a new position this year. Oh my goodness. And it was, uh, it was being offered to me for years and uh, I decided to give it a try this year. And, um, I found out I was very comfortable <laughs> where I was at because this was very challenging. And uh, I'm the only girl. Yeah, I work with nothing but men. And they're young and, you know, they're very tech savvy. You know, they, they're very good at what they do. And so they're very, very smart. All of them have its own special gift. And this is why they put me in the team because of the knowledge that I was able to bring into the team. But uh, <clears throat> so what I had to do I had to learn to humble myself. <laughs> Only because I'm older than them doesn't mean I knew more than them, you know? I'm coming to a new department and, and just stay humble and be teachable, you know? Because I thought I had a lot to offer, but I come to find out, you know, when what they had was a lot more. And uh, I just had to take a step back and just stay humble and stay teachable. And doing that is giving me favor with them and, um, they all have different personalities, and I just had to work, learn how to work with each one of them. And I thank God that he's given me the ability to do that because there was a time that, you know, I will get at it, you know, with people and be yelling and screaming and get into it with them. But, you know, I just learned that, you know, that every person just wants to be heard. You know, when they're speaking, you know, that whether they're right or wrong, they just want to be heard, you know. And that I believe that if you give people the space to be heard, then you will be heard too. You know, and our accomplishment is to get a job done. That's why we're there, you know. So we can't get that done if it's only one way, you know. We have to learn to work together. So uh, it's been a very humbling uh, a time, but at the same time, it's been very challenging, which I thank God for because I have learned a lot coming into this department. Okay. Stretching is stretching. <laughs> okay. So that's a good. What has your company done that you appreciated the most? As uh, as you mean, like for the last twenty five years, or just right now? Just right now. <clears throat> you because know, uh, what I like is that, huh? Because in the midst of COVID, it's already difficult. But when someone's not only introducing you to a new job, I want to know how that company has made made you feel good as a person or what they've done that has made you feel good as a person? Uh, you know, uh, what I like that they've done is the, <clears throat> that they made me feel like we feel special that you have joined us. That's how they made me feel like, like it was like, like something special. I mean, I was like, oh my goodness. And they, you know, all of them, all the guys sending me emails, give me paperwork. They just like, like they gave me no reason to fail. That's what they did. You're gonna need this, you're gonna have this. I mean, and so right now, you know, at first I'm thinking like, what is this? I don't know what they're saying. You know, like all the paperwork they gave me, I'm, I don't know, understand what I'm reading. But as I'm learning, I'm realizing, hey, 
that brother over there, he gave me this paperwork that I need now, you know? And that's the way it is with the things of God, you know? God sometimes gives us a scripture or he gives us a story that at that time we're like, and then <laughs> that trial comes or that situation comes and that word that you ate comes up in you. And then you remember like, what God says this, you know? And so then you're able to, you know, apply it to your situation, you know? And so sometimes I think that's even like that. Like they're giving me things that I didn't think like, I was like, what is all this? All of a sudden I'm looking for that stuff. I'm like, hey, where's that stuff they gave me? You know, that's blah. But that's what they, they did. I feel like they set me up not to fail. And that's what I love about them, you know? That they're like, they looked at me and say, you're going to make it here. You're going to make it good. And they're like, and we can't wait till you catch all this. You know, we're excited to even see that. And I think that's what God does. You know, he gets us. We look all crazy, you know? <laughs> I remember when I was in high school. And I remember I was in high school. I think I was in the 11th or 12th grade. And they decided we're going to have a debate about abortion and the times they were into. And I remember that it was me and my best friend. And so I had to go against abortion and she had to go for abortion. And so I remember that we were debating and, you know, and I was at it, you know, and I was saying, what about this and that, you know, and I, you know, I would talk a lot. And, uh, and I remember I won that debate and I was for abortion. <laughs> I'll never forget that because she was even like, how can everybody be on her side? But I was just kind of, you know, making a debate about it. But anyways, and I think to myself that God saw me that day and said, I could use that girl. <laughs> when she knows the truth, she can stand up and fight for it and say it, you know? And so I, I believe that God sees things in us that he says, sorry about that. And that he says like, oh, I can't wait till I see that girl come through all the way, you know? And I, and just like this, I feel like that team makes, makes me feel like that. Like, God, I can't wait. So she knows all this stuff. This girl's going to be a good team player. Okay. Well, that, that's a good lead into my next question. You have been in a relationship with the Lord for quite some time. And in that relationship, you've had a lot of different experiences. Is there some experience that comes to your mind that God maybe wants you to share right now to help someone? Um, yeah, you know, right now when you said that, um, you know, I believe that, you know, we always think we got God figured out. <laughs> like, I know, he, I know what he's saying when he's going to do. And uh, God doesn't allow us to figure him out, you know. Uh, you know, he wants us to have a relationship, get to know him, you know. And sometimes we think that. So, you know, what came to me when you said that came to me that, that, I, that I know people may not believe, especially newborn Christians, that you will get mad at God. <laughs> and I've been there, you know, where I didn't understand my situation. Uh, you know, I believe God said this and, and, and things didn't turn out the way I wanted to. So I got mad, you know, and I got mad at God. And uh, I remember one day that I told the Lord, you know, like, why did you do this? You know, I was really upset, you know, and I remember just like even screaming it out like, like, why did you do this? And, and something spoke in my spirit and it really made me check myself. And this is what I heard. If you think I did that, then you don't know me. And I was like, whoa. And I had been saved for over 15 years at that time. And I was like, oh my goodness. And you know what? And then um, it made me really, God was showing me I'm not the source of the stuff that's happening to you. And sometimes we think, well, God's in control and he's the one that does all this. It's not necessarily true. I learned that sometimes it's our decisions that put us where we're at. And sometimes other people put us where we're at. And, you know, and of course we know that the enemy is a source of all evil, but it's sometimes we think it's God, you know, and, uh, but, you know, and God may be in control of something. He is in control of all things, but even those things, he uses it for the, our good, you know? And so the thing is that, it's a relationship thing. And in my relationship, this is what I've learned that sometimes they won't go into that test where we're like, we want to be mad at him. You know, we always, everybody talks about, oh yeah, God is my provider. God is my, he's the love of my life. And you know, and all that's all good. But what you do when you're mad at him, you know? And so then I learned that that's comes, that's when trust really needs to kick in. It really tests it. Do you truly trust this God that you preach about, that you talk about, that you praise about you know that's the time to say let that testing come and then he'll let you know if you really truly trust him okay so we have the businesswoman 
we have the daughter of God. And so, you know, what comes to mind now, the woman. And so as a woman, what is God doing in your life as a woman? Um, I think as a woman that um, made me think. I Well, for me, this is where I'm at. <laughs> that I think that God wants me to know, like, um, you're valuable. You know, I'm 52. And a lot of women my age. No. <laughs> stop. <laughs> a lot of women my age, you know, you're like, I'm getting older. Oh, I got more wrinkles. Oh, my goodness, I got this. You know, you start thinking like that. But the, the other day I was driving and I was thinking about that. I was thinking about high school friends and I was just thinking about, you know, how we do get to that age. We start thinking, you know, like, oh, I'm looking like this. But I was just what I heard. Yijira, it's not about outer beauty, but it's about inner strength. And I was like, Oh, that's really deep. It was, I really believe it was the Holy Ghost speaking to me. And that is so true. You can have it all together. You can be 50 and not have a wrinkle, not have any, you know, white hair. You can, you can make it look perfect. But if inside of you, you are not healed and you don't have the strength of God inside of you, all of that is going to come down and it's going to crumble because you can look as beautiful as you can and feel awful. You know, and that's what the Lord showed me. There's about inner strength and inner strength is about the word of God being in you. It's about having the strength of God, you know, and that's why even Jeremiah 17 talks about that. That when you put your trust, when man puts his trust in man or, or on your own strength, how you will be cursed. But it says, but blessed be the man who trusts in the Lord. And I believe that the Lord is you know, showing me like, you know, Worry about getting your inner self healed and strengthened out and, you know, focus on that, you know, and I was, you know, and it's good. I believe in long eyelashes. <laughs> I believe, you know, all these creams. And <laughs> I, mean, I believe in all that, you know, believe me, I, but it's okay to do all that, you know, do it for yourself, not for anybody else. But, you know, I, I don't judge that. You know, I thank God I'm not 20 and, the, and they have all this stuff to offer. <laughs> but first, focus on your inner self, you know, that you do have your scars healed, you know, that you don't have no uh, Band-Aid over it, but that you have truly, 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 you know, gone into like, uh, you know, allowing the word of God to be a mirror and to really look at yourself and say, do I have that? You know, why do I? had jealousy on others or envy, you know, why? And then that you have to really check yourself. And I believe that, I mean, not for anybody else, but for yourself, you know, and that when you allow that word to start doing a work in here inside of you, I believe you're getting somewhere when you okay. do that. Okay. As a daughter of God, who God has used to help numerous women, men, churches, what are some of the most valuable moments you've experienced helping others? Um, what is the most, well, let me think about, <clears throat> okay, I do have uh, this one friend. I, I used to have a, um, a, a Bible stud, a study called Believing for a Miracle. And um, <clears throat> it's when I see a woman, th this is when I got like true joy. When I seen a woman get her promise, I mean, it's just like, man, she did it. And I had a, a class uh, and it was like, it was several women, right? And so this was believing for a miracle and it was believing for your husband's salvation. Well, my husband was in prison. And so of course, you know, people were like coming in like, they had their husband in prison or, but I, it was not for that. It was like, you know, for them to really believe for their husband's salvation. But anyways, but there was this one girl, her name is Tina. <laughs> well, all these women came, but Tina was different. Tina was determined. Tina, she was, she had, she, she was, I truly saw her that she wanted it. 
she, I, will, I will preach about the word of God. And, so, and she wanted what was in there. And that girl on her own, it wasn't so much my preaching. She went and she got a hold of what I was telling her. But that girl went and she got a hold of that Bible. And she was already saved. And she got a hold of that Bible and she started fasting and she started demand. She's just asking God to give her this thing. And she humbled herself and she started acting differently from her husband. All of a sudden he wasn't seeing the same old Tina. He was seeing a new woman and God was doing a work in her. And that girl used to come to my house with bruises and everything. But that girl got a hold of that. And when I saw that, I, I saw her husband one day and he, he, he was dropping her off at church. Tears were coming down his eyes. I said, and I wanted to rebuke him. Hey, brother, get yourself right. You know, to say something like that. Anyways, I just remember tears are coming down. I'm like, what's going on? And he said, I'm changing without wanting to change. Man, that just, it just touched my heart. And, and I just remember seeing that was like, oh my God, it was like the best thing, you know, to see a woman get a hold of what God truly had for her. And she was not going to take no for an answer. A woman is walking in the power of God right now. Okay. Okay. So you are a mother and a grandmother. Uh-huh. <laughs> so how has God gotten you through some things as a mother and a grandmother? Because that, that, that name, mom, you know, most men, when we say, do you love your mother? We, we, we go to smiling. So that's a lot of pressure on a woman. And I've met a lot of different women who have raised their children and a lot of bad decisions that the children make. The mom often blames herself. And so that might not be your experience, but give us something about being a mother or a grandmother. You know, um, I was, you know, I was a single mom and, uh, I would see the ladies at church, you know, and they had their husbands, you know, and so any problem with their son, their daughter, you know, they would go home and talk about it, you know. I didn't have that, but I had Jesus. <laughs> and so I just remember that one thing I asked for, A.B. Christian, I asked for the sermon. I remember I will fast and pray, Lord, give me the sermon. And I tell you one thing, that this sermon really kicked in with those kids. And so I remember that one of my kids told me, and I didn't even know, he said, it was report card day. He said, and I got that report card and I put it in my shoes. He said, I walked in that house and I told him, give me your shoes. <laughs> he said, he was like, oh, <laughs> give me your shoes. That report card's in their shoes. And that was only the Lord. And then I remember too, one day I walked in the house. And I was like, hmm, there's a spirit in this house. And I told everybody, there's a spirit, and it's this. I even named out the spirit. I said, is this type of spirit? Who let him in? And they were all looking at each other. I just looked around the room. I spotted, spotted the kid. I said, you let that spirit in. <laughs> at that time, that kid was, had something on their hand. I can remember because, you know, of course, it was years ago that verified what I had told that kid. And, he, and that kid was like, mom, I'm like, uh, the Lord told me. So I would teach him. This I teach him. Go talk to the Lord. And then when he gives you an answer, he comes to me and we'll talk about it. So I, to I told him that because I wanted them to learn how to get a hold of God, how to hear God. You know, my main goal as a single mom is that if I was gone, that I leave you with the right thing. You know? And of course, you know, I wanted to leave them with money. You know, I wanted them to have everything. You know, you want to you wanna leave them something like that. And I always wanted to, but, you know, it was hard. It's a single parent. But I was like, man, they saw me like, you know, we would have problems, you know, we didn't have any food. They, I would get on my knees. And then someone would call and give us something. So I, I, I didn't want this road for them. But at the same time, it gave them a lot to, you know, to learn. But that's all I had was Jesus. So I will go and I will ask the Lord. Like, uh, I had one son, super smart kid, and uh, I remember when him to go to college, and uh, and he will, you know, play around in school, and I take it seriously, even though he will make nothing but A's and stuff. And I remember one day I was praying about him, and the Holy Spirit told me that is not your son, that's my son. He's not going to go to college. He's going to serve me. Once I heard that, then I just got off of it. 
and that kid didn't go to college and he's the ones that plays keyboard at the church and so but the lord had told me that he's like that kid is mine he's not going to college so the lord would, once he tells you things so once you go to the lord see as a single parent i'd say he, he's really our provider he really is our mechanic <laughs> he really does things for us that no one else can do and so very early i knew like you know what? I can't go wrong with Jesus. I remember one guy telling me that. He said, Sister dear, you're gonna you're gonna listen to God. I'm like, I can't go wrong. I can't go wrong following Jesus, you know. I mean, that's all I have, you know. And he's been so faithful. And I know this is pretty extra, but uh, so I met this guy when my husband just went to prison. He was like about a year later, and he said, Sister dear, he brought in the church. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll build you a house. If you allow me, you know, to come in and, and I'll, be, I'll raise your children. And I was like, no. Then another guy, a year later, came and said, I will buy your house. So it's a swimming pool and I will help you raise those children. And the Lord told me, no. The Lord told me, I'm going to build your house. The Lord told me, you wait on me, I'll build your house. I've been saved five years. And this woman told me, she was the one that nurtured me in the things of God. And she told me, I've seen your house. She said, I seen your house. She goes, you got a two-story home. And she described it. And I tell you one thing right now. The Lord built me a house. And, and it's just described just like the way that woman had described it to me when I was only five years in the Lord. And so all I like to tell you is that God is faithful. One thing about him is that when he becomes your husband, you know, anybody else, you know, some big shoes to fill. Because <laughs> now you're spoiled. And that's what I told the Lord. Lord, you have me spoiled. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna be able to do that now. <laughs> I just I thank God because you know he he is with us even through those scary moments. The kids are making wrong choices, you know. That sometimes these hands, you know, they're too little for those big kids now, you know. But God's hands are not too little. Yeah, he's got them. And so the nights, you know, that I would stay up or whatever, anything I went through, you know, and he does prepare us for everything because I am a grandma and my daughter got praying it before she got married but the lord told me i want to talk to you by a little girl and i told him no i don't want to get pregnant <laughs> i was telling the lord no no my husband's come home and i don't want to have another baby that's what i was telling him and he was like i want to talk to you by little girl i said no i don't want to talk about it <laughs> I was telling him I don't want to talk about it because I'm not I'm not gonna have no more kids. <laughs> That's what I was telling him. Because I thought he wanted to tell me that my husband was gonna come home and they were gonna have a baby. So I was telling him, no, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and then, like about a few weeks later, <laughs> my daughter tells me she's pregnant. And the Lord's like, ah, oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> I thought you was gonna be a girl because he had told me I want to talk to you about a little girl. <laughs> and so of course I was really upset. And then a year. <laughs> a year after the baby's born I started going through some really hard times and that baby was what God used to start bringing a lot of healing in my life he knows yeah. exactly what he's doing <laughs> okay. so we've covered a lot concerning the roles that you've played and concerning you as a woman how long have you and I known each other I think I went into Polanski 2009, 2008, around there. Yeah, you so that is like 12 years. Something. There's a reason I'm building up to something. Do you remember? Okay, oh, but my phone's about to die. <laughs> Sorry. I'm okay, you're okay. The reason that I said that, I appreciate. <laughs> I appreciate the kindness and prayers. And before your phone dies, do you have any questions for me? Um, uh, let me see. So are you dating? <laughs> so, Sean, how long have okay. you been now? Five months? <laughs> no, I am not dating. No, I am not dating. <laughs> okay. I'm very proud of you, my brother. So I, don't have, I don't have questions, but I do have to say that I'm very, very proud of you. And when I talk about you, I testify about you. And I'm just uh, ecstatic just to see you running for God. And that you were one that really came out running. Well, I praise God for that. And I thank you. Is there anything that you'd like to share? Before? Uh, no, I just want to encourage everybody, everybody out there that, <clears throat> that God is faithful. 
and that he does have your children in his hands and that things sometimes don't seem, you know, the way we want them, you know, things don't work out sometimes like that. But one thing for sure I know is that he knows what he's doing. And that through it, he does use it for our good. And that he does build us up. He does bring us through. And he won't let us go. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. And I've enjoyed you. You did really, really well. Praise the Lord. Thank Uh, you, Brother Sean, for challenging me. (laughs) Okay. Okay. It, It took a little bit.